Many thanks to you, Rami, for joining in here on CNN News 18. It was a pleasure to have you on the show. And with that, let's now shift focus over to the big news that is coming in from the Netherlands. The far-right populist leader Geert Wilders has won big in the Dutch polls this time, often referred to as the Dutch Trump. Geert Wilders is anti-Islam, anti-immigrant and anti-European Union. Wilders won and he's set to now have far-reaching consequences on the Netherlands and all of Europe. Wilders' far-right party for freedom or the PVV won 37 of the 150 seats in the Dutch parliament and this is the first time a coalition of the right-wing parties could potentially form a government in Amsterdam and that is what makes it extremely monumental. Across the channel, the French political arena is also witnessing a departure from traditional centrist ideologies with an emphasis on anti-Islamic and anti-immigrant rhetoric. While Wilders is anti-Islam, anti-immigrant and anti-European Union as a political leader, he also is backed um, by India because or an Indian politician last year who had called the prophet a pedophile. And this is something that was backed by gate builders here in India as well. However, with the foundational principles of multiculturalism being challenged, will builders be able to garner support to form a coalition government? That's something we'll be delving deeper into. But first up is a report. Dutch far-right politician Geert Wilders could be set to lead the Netherlands as its next Prime Minister. Beating all predictions, his Freedom Party, or PVV, won 37 out of 150 seats in Wednesday's general election, making it the largest party in the Dutch Parliament. At a cafe in The Hague, Wilders, who campaigned on an anti-Islam, anti-EU platform, celebrated and gave a victory speech. We will make sure that the Netherlands will be for the Dutch people again. We will restrict the asylum tsunami and migration. People will have more money in their wallet again. Wilders is expected to try to form a right-wing government with outgoing Prime Minister Mark Rutte's party, the VVD, and the upstart party, New Social Contract. Together, they would hold the majority with 81 seats. But both parties have expressed doubts about Wilder's outspoken anti-Islam stance, which includes wanting to ban mosques and the Quran from the Netherlands. Wilder's inflammatory views on Islam have prompted death threats, and he has lived under heavy police protection for years. Islamic and Moroccan media organizations have expressed concern about his victory. Habib El Khadouri, who represents Dutch Moroccans, told Dutch media, quote, The distress and fear are enormous. We are afraid that he will portray us as second-class citizens. Wilders blamed the housing shortage in the Netherlands on asylum seekers, drawing on widespread concerns about the cost of living and the overburdened healthcare system. A self-proclaimed fan of Hungary's Viktor Orban, Wilders is also explicitly anti-EU. He has said the Netherlands should significantly cut payments to the Union and block any new members from entering. He would also stop sending Ukraine more weapons. However, Neither of the parties he could potentially form a government with share many of these ideas. Even, as Wilders claims, his party has now become too large to ignore. Outgoing Prime Minister Rutte will remain in office until a new government is installed, likely in the first half of 2024. But what, does, uh, make, uh, what makes Gilder's victory so monumental? Let me break it down for you. Uh, as we all know, he's a far-right populist leader. He's also anti-Islam. He's anti-EU. But what makes him stand out? These are one of the reasons. Now, Geert Wilders is often known as the Dutch Donald Trump. At the same time, Wilders is anti-immigration, anti-Islam and anti-European Union. He's a far-right anti-Islam and uh, uh, Wilders is set to now lead this coalition government. At the same time, we all know how, that the challenge is going to be how he forms that coalition government. It's the uh, biggest political earthquake in the Netherlands since World War II, his victory. That is what is making news right now. Netherlands is historically seen as a bellwether 
to Europe. And could this now also be an indication of the larger trend that's taking place in EU? Let's try and find that out from our correspondent Sanjay Suri, who's joining me live right now. Thank you, Sanjay, for joining in. Now, uh, as far as Wilders is concerned, he's already known as a far-right populist leader. How do you read into his initial comments uh, when he said that the Dutch borders have had their say and that they've clearly had enough? He also talks about returning the country to the Dutch. Well, uh, he is taking the cue clearly from a lot of very successful right-wing movements that are taking place around the world. Uh, we can, at the very least, say coincidentally. But clearly, this is too much to be coincidence. There's quite a wave around. We've seen the results in Argentina. We've seen, of course, some years back, uh, Britain break away from the EU. We've seen the emergence of the far right in France and knocking at the doors of government there in the next election. And this result in uh, the Netherlands is going to be a very significant sign of perhaps change to come clearly around Europe and within Netherlands already. He is a leader of the far right. He has been knocking on the doors of the government for some time. He emerged many years ago with his message. He was seen as sort of crazy fringe right wing. Now he has been elected to government. The voters have spoken, and he's quite right to say the voters have spoken, and it's a decisive message. And there clearly is a very strong groundswell of opinion within the Netherlands against immigration, certainly against Islam, most certainly, and to an extent and a considerable extent, also against the EU and membership of the EU. Right. It's very interesting, Sanjay, that you talk about how the voters have spoken through his victory. But, you know, let's also talk about the challenges at hand for Wilders because, uh, remember, the primary most challenge is going to be about how he forms that coalition government. Do throw light on that aspect. Well, uh, the fact is that he certainly is going to form a coalition government. The question now, and this is a question to which we await answers, how far he can be restrained uh, by any partner in that coalition government. The clear message from the voters is something he will point to. He is the front runner, his party has been the front runner. And to the extent it gets hemmed in or where it cannot carry out its promised policies, it will be seen and certainly be projected by him and his party as betrayal of the verdict. This is going to be a game now between the vote for his party, which is the strongest uh, clearly by far, and uh, the extent to which the mandate that uh, has elected him uh, fails to get expressed or does get expressed. So it is not clear that the coalition is going to uh, restrain him or stop him entirely. The question is, there will be some sort of a gradation. Perhaps there will be a compromise. Clearly, there will be a consensus on immigration and cutting numbers clearly there will be a push towards some of the policies that we've seen in france right. uh, against uh, free expression of uh, public expression of uh, muslim views uh, that is very likely but there may be a stop before departing from the eu all right fair enough sanjay my last question from italy to finland greece and now the netherlands does wilder's success signify a broader trend in european politics where a wave of populist and hard right parties are reshaping the political landscape especially uh, across various eu member nations clearly that is the case and this is quite a wave um, across the eu it's a wave beyond the eu as well We've been seeing it in many different parts of the world, but clearly there is a very strong sweep in the EU. And a lot of that is driven by immigration, which a lot of countries and people in countries see as getting out of hand. People coming in uh, one after the other in hundreds and hundreds. And these have swelled now to millions. Uh, that's making a demand on jobs. It's making a demand on the budget. And supporting these people is leading to more crime, sadly and people say they want a stop to this. And this is an issue affecting just about every country, not least Britain, where you have a conservative government with some chance that it may come back in again as well. And the Brexit uh, in Britain is also turning out to be a model. A lot of, of the right wing in uh, many of the European countries is pushing for a break from the European Union. And if that move were to succeed, Europe will not be what we see it to be now. Certainly the European Union will not.
Absolutely. We await to see what kind of permutation combinations Wilders comes up with during his coalition government. For now, many thanks to you, Sanjay Suri. It was a pleasure to have you here on CNN News 18 Global. And that's all I have for you in this broadcast. Thank you so much for watching CNN News 18 Global.